Teresa Williams is on Soul Sisters. Woo! Thanks for coming to me. Excited. <laughs> soul Sisters. Soul Sisters. Yeah. You're a soul sister. I love Hell that. Hell yeah. Yeah. This is how I want to start things with you. Okay. Uh, you have played and recorded and worked with some of the most famous musicians in the world. So I feel like probably a standard question you get is like, what is Jackson Brown like? What is Emmylou Harris like? What is Lee Von Helm like? But, I love those questions. And, and I we'll don't We'll get care. to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> but I kind of want to flip it because like the best artists in the world want to work with you. So what are you like? What? What's going How on with you? you? Nice. Just keep it coming, <laughs> Jesse. But How what, sweet are you? What is it that everyone's like, I got to work with Teresa? Well, I don't know if that's true, but I just end well, up getting lucky to be on the stage with them and then pinch myself and go, do you realize you were here? <laughs> <laughs> From I'm, the cotton patch to on this stage with yeah. Phil Lesh, people are like, how did that happen? Yeah. That's just a strange from cotton to psychedelic you know yeah yeah <laughs> airplane yeah what what was the tipping point like who did you work with that then kind of just kept that ball rolling from there that you were just able to keep keep these amazing gigs going that's a that's a good question probably um pro yeah well you know my husband and i were going in different directions uh -huh. for the first maybe 15 years of our marriage yeah. i mean we met doing music but uh, he was going his way, and I was doing mine, and I was always mixing acting in. I was always doing music. It's kind of a bread-and-butter job, okay. and I loved it, and I wanted to do more of it, um, but I was also interested in act just telling stories. You know, yeah. It's about telling stories. Even photography I love because it, it does, a photo tells you so much. Even the ones that we all want to delete, right. there's so much in a photo that you think is just kind of, uh, that one wasn't so but. You catch things, yeah. Anyway, I think feel like it's that way in a song and um, mm. and with acting, it's all telling a story to me. Mm -hmm. like, well, like with me, I'm detouring wildly, but it, like with my husband and I, he we're riding along in the car and uh, listening to something, and I'm like, oh my god, that's the that are you hearing this song is so beautiful, and he's like, eh, I don't really get that, like. Have you heard the lyrics? Because he's hearing melody first, mm -hmm. ah, okay. and he can't. And I hear lyrics first. Mm -hmm. um, but are your sensibilities the same yes. as far as what speaks to yes. you? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's that was that. So that was the union. We, we were on something the other day where they wanted. We both had to um, submit six songs that could be like be um, influences or just something you love or you know. Uh, and uh, and they would take us one at a time, and we were so the songs were getting woven yeah. together. I was like, that is how our relationship. That's the tapestry of our relationship. Like oh, those cool. songs yeah. of what pulled us together. Can you give us an example? Um, well, I had uh, Jimmy Rogers to represent the Bristol Sessions, mm -hmm. and I did a play on the Carter Fell original play on the original Carter family, which was total labor of love. Um, right before Larry and I started working together, he was still out with Dylan when okay. uh, I was doing that. And mine finished, and he jumped off that tour at about the same time. Uh, I'm digress wildly. But then right That's after fine. that, Levi called him, and then a little later, Amy Helm called me. And so we were working together for the first time. So but you were already together. I didn't. We've been together since 87, and then we married in 88. Where did you meet? Um, I was doing a little um, thing called the Marlboro Country Music Contest. In okay. New York? In New York at the famed Bottom Line, which, alas, is no more. It right. has been consumed by NYU. Mm -hmm. Hang on. I want to pause just for those who don't know the context wildly. of... No, just like your marriage and who your husband is. So you're married to Larry Campbell who is another astounding musician. Instrumentalist par excellence, if yes. I do say. My mother yeah. said, you have to stop bragging on your husband. It's tacky and people don't like it. But no, I can't help you it. gotta do it. There's nothing He's all like that. that, okay? Yeah, yeah. He's all that. Yes. He's not say. just a regular whatever. Like <laughs> right. I, He's a legend. I'm, I encountered him because I saw him playing with Dylan 
10 or so years ago and all I remember really from that show was Larry Campbell being like who the hell is that guy and then like telling my dad about it and then my dad got super into him and I was like obsessed with both of you and then so you're like a family (laughs) treasure for us um and we both saw you guys at the barn you saw them there right oh you went I to a ramble? You. Yeah. I met you there. Yeah. Did I meet you I, there? I, no, we didn't meet. Oh, but, but you look so... You must have sat up close front because I just remember oh, your face. It was a New Year's Eve show. Whoa. That's yeah. a great place to spend oh New Year's God, Eve. Oh, my God. It's the best. Great. I want to leave on rambles you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah. For right. those who don't For know. those who don't know. The right. Midnight, and Woodstock. The midnight ramble. Yeah. Right. Which... I mean, we got to try not to speak in such shorthand here. <laughs> I mean, we should just talk about that. Okay, I don't know we where will. we want to. So. Well, OK, anyway. So so you and Larry are two amazing artists who are married to each other and have been for many years, many several years. decades. We just just celebrated 29th wedding anniversary. OK, congratulations. Yeah. And but, in this but business, only... it's a big congratulations. Absolutely. Yeah. But have only been officially working together. I don't know, fifth, since like oh five. Okay. I guess. Okay. But do you count the barn? Do you count the rambles as working yes. together? Yes. Yes, because um, that's really what helped us start working formally together um, and doing our own thing within that context. Um, we're still doing kind of what we started doing under the tree that my great great grandmother planted. We were married under that tree, but we play music under that tree uh, down with the locals and my family and stuff um, when we're home down right. Tennessee, West Tennessee. But when we started with Levon, I mean, we'd always just kind of done that for fun. But then when we started with Levon, he uh, likes he liked ensemble witness the band mm-hmm. and. Uh, I think that made him comfortable. It took some of the pressure off, even though it was obviously people coming to see him and his show. And, you know, so and then when he wasn't in good voice, we all had to really step up. Mm-hmm. And but he, everybody in that, most of the people in that band had their own bands. were were just excellent musicians, and um, so everybody stepped up and had solos regularly. Yeah. And Larry and I just our thing, like when he would be out of voice, Levon. Uh, you know, we'd have to pull up some of these old songs that we'd been doing, and they became a th- part of the ramble. Yeah. And then when, tw- close to when Levon, before he started getting sick uh, this last time, um, we started putting down some of our stuff there. And he's on, like, he's on our current record, yeah. and he's on one of the songs of the other record, the first one. Yeah. I think Larry, st- we still have, like, maybe some more, one yeah. or two more, I don't know. All right, Levon's drumming is on Turnaround. That's that right? right. That's right. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. So that's kind of how Larry and my thing uh, developed. And then when he died, we got really serious about because uh, we just wanted to keep working together, and it was fun. Yeah. To work together. So uh, and the music we were doing was fun. So okay. that's kind of the impetus that people are like, why did you wait so long? And right. we're just both going in different directions, and it just. I said to my brother the other day, it just this just kind of happened when I wasn't looking, uh-huh. and that's yeah. kind of cool, you know. That's a lot of the best things happen. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. So you didn't meet working together. We did. Oh, you did. So okay. the day, okay. Uh, my unfortunately yeah. uh i had a brother who's two and a half years younger than me who died suddenly in 1986 in february of 1986 mm. and that just kind of will flip your head around yeah. and i started doing things it just made things you just want to grab things that matter to you mm-hmm. more um and i went to nashville and did a little demo just to have something of myself on i didn't have anything official of me singing on tape to give to anybody if mm-hmm. I was ever asked. I was doing jazz, don't ask, in New yeah. York. I just happened to know a lot of those songs, and I realized this girl had a job doing it. She didn't want her job anymore, and I needed a job, and I knew the songs. So I was like, what okay. was the job? Oh, Lord, you're going you're gonna to make me tell all this, which is kind of... But, you know... Yeah. Uh, um, okay, so when I got to New York... I'm old enough to have been uh, one of the opening act and backup singers for Eddie Arnold, the Tennessee Plowboy, who you guys have probably never heard of, but he was a crossover artist back uh-huh. in the day, and he was at the towards the end of his career when you know my almost my first job in New York. Mm-hmm. 
and um, our little group we opened and clo- opened for him and also sang backup for him. I thought I was coming to New York to do Shakespeare and some music, you know, and uh, end up working with the guy who grew up thirty minutes from where I grew up. Uh-huh. <laughs> So it's wow, like, that's so funny. I mean, he would literally, is, he would literally show up with a mule and his guitar at parties. This guy, I've heard all the stories down there, and the people mule? would dread hearing him show up, seeing him coming because he would just dominate the whole night, kind yeah. of like you've heard, you've heard, you've. They say that in some of the books about Dylan that he would do the same thing. He would just come and play and play and play till yeah. everybody was gone, and then the host is just there with him still playing. <laughs> that's what they said Eddie Arnold used to do. Oh, uh, that's so funny. But in between all this with Eddie Arnold, I got a job, don't laugh, on the cruise ships. I was just trying to survive, right? Hey, no judgment thought, for that. Oh, it's going to take me off my serious acting career, and it did. <laughs> but, you know, that's where the girl had the job doing jazz uh-huh. and I my contract was ending I just ended a, a, a relationship broken off an engagement and I wasn't wanting to come back to the city mm. so her job ended and she just gave it to me wow oh. and uh, so I went from working one or two nights a week to working every but but you know what that job those jobs were great because it was such a cushy job back then I think it's all changed now yes. but all you had to do was perform like two nights a week yeah, that's all and you, you had make to enough do. money to live. Oh, it was good money. I mean, for me right. at that age and at that time, and and yeah, it was. And all you, all I had to do all day long was listen to Ella Fitzgerald right. and Billie Holiday because I had grown up on country music. George Jones was coming out my pores. Right. You know, I'm doing basically now what my parents taught me in the living room. Right. Uh-huh. So I would never have even had to go to school. You know, it's just hysterical that I came to New York thinking I was going to be doing Shakespeare, and the first thing I did was work with Eddie Arnold, the Tennessee Plowboy, yeah. <laughs> and then and then went to jazz. And, and I just listened to Billie Holiday until you know. Oh my God! Don't explain. Do nothing till you hear. It. Oh, I had to finally just like enough. This is too dark and sad. You have to stop mm. now. I mean, yeah. like a year of just solid Sarah Vaughn, and I just, right. I just, I just did a like whole education while I was doing this job. And some of the old players from New York were out there now because, you know, it's a cushy job. But this, so I mm-hmm. went from doing working two nights a week to when I took the girls' jazz job working every night of the week. And it was just a good journeyman thing to do. Yeah. The old guys were teaching me the ropes, and uh, it was a different medium from the country stuff I'd grown up doing, country gospel and stone cold country uh-huh. uh, at church, and, and there's no expression in that uh, mm-hmm. country. If you notice the country artists back in those days, mm-hmm. there's no expression. You're oh, not. Interesting. You're not... You're not performing you're, in that it, way. You're, doing you're not it, emoting. You're, right. You are in that it's you, it's raw, basic, real. Vo- yeah. Right. They won't hear you if it's not. Right. So you got that lesson. Mm-hmm. But then in jazz, it's you interpreting mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. time-worn treasures. And so it was me interpreting it for the first time. And that was, I held onto the piano behind me, like, the entire first set the first time I did. I was terrified. Because... <laughs> I'd never had to do that. Like, can you improvise? Like, eventually like, was there that you could a little, bit, a little bit. But I'm not. That's not my big thing. I'm, yeah, I that's never. I, mean, I, I would say I never scat my jazz. Yeah. I just, I just don't hear it. It's not mm-hmm. me. I, 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 like I said, I want words and pictures. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. That, that's. Um, I don't even remember how we got the jazz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when I got back to New York, um, I answered an ad in a paper for this thing that I had no idea. And, and then I ended up doing doing it here in the city as a bread and butter job. So, but then I was always, you know, doing country at home. And, and that's, that wasn't going to go away. It's my first suit. Right. So when my brother died, I went to Nashville and did a demo that I don't remember how many songs I put on it. Just maybe even two or three. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. And I got back to New York and sent my heard on the brushing my teeth thinking I can't get arrested you know <laughs> and yeah. I'm not doing anything and I'm at least I heard this ad for the Marlboro country music thing I thought okay I'll send my tape in it's the right you know at least I'm doing I did something today. what was it exactly was it a jingle competition or? no it was like a country band kind oh. of competition I don't okay. I don't know the perp I don't know any <laughs> all I know is that I they said you're in okay. come and do it and I didn't know any players in New York uh-huh. country music players yeah I thought a New York country music player was an oxymoron. Right, yeah. I was snob about it and prejudiced about it, I admit. And then uh, 
a friend of a friend put a band of some of the best players in the city, one of which was Larry Campbell. And Wow. Uh, Who's a New York City boy. Born and raised, one of the right. few. And but he was playing that country so stuff he's sitting at the there, time? He's sitting there. I go in. I'm nervous. I'm putting myself out on a limb. I've not done this in New York country, a band, you know, behind me of my, my choosing, yeah. so to speak. And uh, I just thought it was going to be a disaster. I had some Hank in it. I had the demo songs I had on the, you know, I was doing that. Uh-huh. So, uh, I thought it would be a disaster. These guys aren't going to know how to play country music. It's just, this is, you know, and then I'm singing in the rehearsal and I hear the pedal steel. I'm like, who are you? You're saving my life. Oh, God bless you, whoever you are. And then I look over, you know, he's just rolled out of bed and rolled downtown for this rehearsal. But as he's leaving, I apologize for making him lug this heavy pedal steel down to this rehearsal. Uh And he looks at me and, girls, it was all... (laughs) over it was all i just called off a wedding like a big wedding uh-huh. uh two weeks before the wedding where all the family was going to fly to tennessee we had the tickets to nova scotia for the honeymoon oh we were going to have another wedding here to satisfy the catholic family i mean it was a lot and i called it off my mother was really mad at me but then just a few weeks later i met larry so there you go. And wow. there was no ifs and is this <laughs> And I've I've told you know, I was like when I looked in his eyes I could see who he is. What you see that he is on stage, uh-huh. his soul you can see he's a true his soul is true. Mm-hmm. You can just see he's just a true, deep, deep soul. And mm-hmm. I looked in those eyes and saw all that in that moment. I'm not making this up. And then since when I've talked about that, he said, oh, I was vibing you. <laughs> He's That's just awesome. now after 30 years telling me that he was totally oh vibing me. That's really <laughs> cute. Larry's he's also a very approachable guy. I once had a few too many bourbons at a ramble and I walked up to him afterwards and I was just like, I love you so much. I've seen you before and you're the best. And what's it like to be on tour with Dylan? And he stood there and talked to me for a long time. So nice. And my friend loves to tease me to this day about like that time I got too drunk at a ramble and talked to Larry Campbell. I'm like, but it was the best. We had a really nice conversation. He's so sweet. And he's He's very modest. Right. That's exactly. very attractive. That's very attractive. He's very handsome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the modesty is attractive. Yeah, That's what I... Right. That, right. Yeah. right. Well, that night... I was like, he's very his, his, his dreamy. <laughs> that night at the bottom line, I'm pulling up in the cab for the gig, uh-huh. and he's leaning out on the outside side street at the bottom line, like, smoking a cigarette, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> he cleans up nice. <laughs> It was that over, girls. Yeah. It was over. I mean, it was. Oh, I like for the next. I don't know. He told he told a story once that you that like the first words you ever said to him were, "Surrender to oh, love." Oh, he makes that up. <laughs> it was it's him good, vibing good me. Good legend. He was saying it when he was vibing me. That's yeah. what he was Wait, doing. I have a question. I saw you guys perform at Joe's Pub a few months ago. And you have this really funny on-stage repartee where you're kind of giving him a lot of shit. I give him a hard time. And he's kind of rolling his eyes or he's like gritting his teeth or he's just trying to be real <laughs> stoic and kind of take it. And I Because really, he never knows what I'm going to say. And I wanted to know if that was kind of an act that you put on for the performance or if that's just, what he's the so, dynamic is. He's so good and he's so, you know, his, the quality of his work is impeachable, right? He's just <laughs> so... You He's just Mr. All That up there. <laughs> and I just have to poke poke holes in the bubble. Yeah, little, just a little bit. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but you do talk, like on stage, I think you mentioned it, and I've seen you talk about it in interviews that like sometimes you don't know the subject of the songs that he's writing and you're kind of questioning I don't who's that about. Know. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. And then there are some that I he pulls them out and I'm like, oh, he wrote that after that fight we had yesterday. <laughs> I'm not singing that. There's no way I'm singing that. And well, you're you singing it. You're out? singing it. You're singing it. I'm not singing it. And he's sure. No, no, you're singing it. Well, no, you're singing it. <laughs> okay. So he, you usually talks, it? he usually talks me into it. Yeah. But that, all but, of that is such a new thing for you guys because he's a oh, relatively new oh, songwriter. Girl, so coming. Right. We are really married now. Yeah. Those <laughs> first 15 years, people thought we were just dating and it was like you were just dating because we'd just see each other, you know, here and there. And you didn't have mm. to work anything out. 
because right, because you wouldn't be together because I'm like physically. Oh, he wants to see, see that blockbuster, shoot him up, whatever. Okay, he can see it because he'll be gone in a week, and I can see whatever I want. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, you never had to work anything out. It's yeah. like, okay, well, you feel that way? Okay, fine. I'll see you. You know, when you get back in two months. <laughs> yeah. You just didn't, and now we have. Now it's a real now. one. Then when we were working with we left, Levi, we bought a house upstate. Oh, then you're really married. Yeah. yeah. You got some stuff to work out There's right nothing, there. There's nowhere to go. What's that just Woodstock work life like? Because I fantasize about moving to yeah, Woodstock all the dream. time. Do so it. So every time I meet an artist who lives up there, I'm like, tell it's me that beautiful. I should do it. It is beautiful. It is beautiful, and the music community is yeah. thriving. I mean, the Rambles were my access to Woodstock. That was the first time I ever went up there and spent I think time. A, lot of people, a lot of people have moved there because of their experience of going you yeah. know, mm-hmm. just hanging the weekend when they went to the Ramble. Right. But it extends beyond that, the music oh, scene. Yeah. There's oh, a lot. yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just getting better. Yeah. yeah. They've renovated the colony, and apparently we're playing there when we get off the tour, uh-huh. um, a couple of weeks after we get off the tour uh, early December. And it's they say it's the, the colony is hooked up, that it's really, really nice place to play. And we play the Bearsville Theater there. And, and uh, yeah, every now and then, every blue moon, we'll have a reunion of the Ramble Band at the barn. And that's, you know, that's just bliss, old home yeah. week. And we go to Jamaica together for the Little Feet, uh, when Little Feet goes every oh, winter. that's cool. Yeah. Good it's fun. What's kind, what kind of musical sort of like lessons or things that you take with you now when you're doing your duo stuff? Like what what did you learn there? Or what do you take with you and like really just hold on to from that experience as far as collaborating or just being part of a band or, or with the ra- you know, from the from ramble? the ramble? Yeah. Uh, I think. Well, the first time I saw Larry play with, if I veer too off, far off, you just bring me back. <laughs> uh, the first time I saw Larry play with Dylan, I mean, when I was younger, and I thought, well, if I made a record, I mean, I don't even know what genre, because I like so many kinds, different kinds of music, and I would just joke, well, I sing everything except opera, and I don't scat my jazz, right. you know. Uh, Other than that. <laughs> I, I just like to make a living, and I like to sing, and, you know, and I, uh, so... Okay, I'm totally losing my train of thought with with <laughs> with with the ramble and, um, or just I mean it's such a unique experience to be part to watch and to be part of as a okay. as an audience okay. member. So yes. being part of that band, like, is there are there unique things that you took from that specific experience that now you take as a musician and you work with? Well, yes, um, yes. It's the I'm sleep of a deprived. I'm sorry, right, guys. Right. I, no, I mean, yeah. so the first time I saw Larry play with Dylan, uh, and I had thought as a, as, you know, just in school, and I was thinking, mm, am I, do I want to do this? Do mm-hmm. I want to go this route? Mm-hmm. And what, what would I do if I made my first record? What, what genre would I even do? Because mm-hmm. country would be obvious, you right. know, was, but, but a little more challenging for me would be some of these other, and just, just having fun with these different things that you love. Um, well, when I saw Larry play with Dylan, like the very first concert, I was like, way out in the back at a festival, I think, and just watching this whole thing go down. And I'd never seen Dylan live, and I was like, oh, he's doing all of it in one show. You can do all of it in one show and not worry about it. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing to me. Yeah. And then Levon did the same thing. Not coincidentally, they had that oh, right. <laughs> history together. They do have a history. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was really freeing. Yeah. Like, just don't yeah. worry about don't it. Just do what in. you love. Just do it, and if it yeah. feels real, and you know it's feeling, you know you're being real about it. Right. Uh, that's a big takeaway from Larry's yeah. years with Dylan, and uh-huh. then and then getting to be up close and personal with it with Levon. That's yeah. a big takeaway. Another thing is some of the songs that Larry and I do now evolved from hearing from having a five piece horn section behind me. <laughs> Howard Johnson, come on, Clark Gayton, uh-huh. uh, all those Eric Lawrence, all those guys. I just I can't even tell you what that, how that will lift your skirt. Yeah. If you have five horns behind doing a solo each in right. between, if you're doing a cover of um, uh, uh, um, Sugary. Uh huh. Oh, um, it, it yeah. just will inform. It just makes it go. And then playing that uh, uh, with Jack Cassidy too is another one. Uh, Phil Lesh is, you know, well-renowned bass player. Mm-hmm. It's Phil Lesh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then to do it with Jack, from Jack's point of view, from the airplane and hot tuna, that would just take you places that you didn't know your voice wanted to go or that the song wanted to go. Yeah. 
It's just cra- it's crazy, and you try to just sit over here and stay out of the way and let it happen and watch like, wow. So some of the stuff that I'm doing in some of these songs now, mm-hmm. even if it's just me and Larry, yeah. is, is, is left from... Or, or to hear Brian Mitchell on the keyboard, yeah. like like going crazy on the organ with some really New Orleansy, uh, juicy you know mojo in there uh-huh. that, that that I still uh, is still in me and I still yeah. am hearing even if it's just me and Larry. Yeah. Right. I feel like that answers my original question about why all these artists want to work with you because you can just <laughs> I love you when you just say like that. Live, Keep saying that. You just like live in their music and live in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And just like bring your power to that, wow. you know. I like I like this girl. Yeah, you like mm-hmm. that there. Just yeah. keep it going. Mm-hmm. Just testing it out here. Um, yeah, we can't keep you much longer. But uh, <laughs> don't cry, Dara. I, so no. I didn't even let you ask questions. I was just talking so nonstop. I'm no, sorry. No, that's the best scenario. And I haven't even had any caffeine. That's the scary <laughs> part. <laughs> oh boy. So you're at City Winery last night. Is and, that, t- and tonight. And tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With um, Sean, yeah, we're opening for Sean and then playing in her band, which is really she, it's really fun to see she and Larry. Sean Colvin, yes, Con- Sean on Colvin. The show. And I'm sorry, I did. I meant to mention that when we were doing that bottom line thing, uh, and Larry played pedal steel. Well, uh-huh. the next morning he called me and he said, uh, "I'm really sorry, but I cut my finger chopping a melon this morning, and I can't play guitar." And I was crushed because he was so. And he was very supportive, like when he'd call on the phone, oh, what do you want me to wear? And I was Aww. like, oh, he's calling me to find out what he wants him to wear, <laughs> what I want him to wear. Um, he said, well, I can't play, but 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 I'll get my friend John Leventhal, and he won't need to rehearse. He'll be fine, and I'll play uh, Pell Steel. Let's, uh-huh. yeah, uh, wait, let's see. What, what? Yeah, I guess that was what he, I've got it backwards, but John couldn't make the rehearsal, so that's why Larry was okay. on Pell Steel. So we had John Leventhal and Larry in that first little country <laughs> band that I had, my first country experience in New York. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. So last night on stage uh-huh. is Sean, John, Larry. And I said, how long wow. has it been since the-? I had the presence of mind to get my phone out and take pictures, take pictures. from my side yeah. of the stage. Wait, do you all play together? Well, John, John just came because we we're in town and he right. lives down the street. And he and Sean are working on a new record, so oh, okay, okay. so he came and they played a couple of their new songs oh, and, God, and the so encore, fun. and and so it was just so much fun for me. I wasn't here when all of them first met. Uh-huh. I'm jealous of that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you know that they all were hanging before yeah. I ever got here, and uh, so it was so sweet to see them all having old home week and and to see Larry and Sean like catching up. And she's telling me some good stories that I don't know on Larry. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Um, all right, so. Contraband Love. I don't even think we've said the name of the right. album, but yeah. Contraband Love. It's out. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's so out. good. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank it's you. Gorgeous. Uh, are you gonna try to record some solo stuff at some point? Is you know, I evolution? think about that when I, if I start getting too cranky and um, <laughs> maybe irritable, uh-huh. ask my manager. <laughs> I start going, okay, what's really going on here? Yeah. Yes, you're tired, you're exhausted. Yes, you're on the road, but there's more than that going on. And I start going, okay, you need to find a new, something that's going to push the envelope for you that's yeah. scary yeah. creatively. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, this song came to me during, like, lyrics came to me. And I'm not, I never considered myself a songwriter, and uh, but I do write every day just, it's compulsive. I can't do the day unless I sit and I've, I've journals ad nauseum. It's 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 it, it's probably bordering on me- bordering on mental, but I love words. I love reading, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily make you a writer. But yeah, I'm just trying to push myself to have a really so that fun title. If I ever did a solo, record, have a really fun fun title, which I'm not going to read. Fun title. Right It'll it Ooh. screws it up if I tell it now. Yeah, it's okay. Save it. But we yeah. we hope. That Thanks we for will asking, hear it. though. Yeah. But yeah, that's true. If I, if I find myself starting to get a little too uh, not pleasant, I I'm I like it's I'm time thinking to go off. it's time to. And a friend said you need to stop reading so many books. He said when I do that, I realize I need to do a big creative project because reading is creative. I love reading. I have yeah. like piles around the bed. Right. And he said, that's, you know, you're getting your creative thing off in the book, like building the pictures in your head while you're reading uh-huh. and you need to just stop and do a project. There you go. Okay. Good advice. Yeah. I've never well, heard that. 
When I told my dad you were coming on the podcast, he said, great, make her sing, which we're not going to do because dad, she's tired and she's in between gigs and, and, and it's we early. can't really do it in this space anyway. Oh, if only. Um, but I did give him your album as his birthday present this year and he's been Thank listening to it constantly you. and playing to, he plays mandolin so he plays along with you guys and uh, so he'll just have to put that back on <laughs> if he wants to hear you today. Um, but I'm well, going to be at the show tonight so oh, yay. I'm very excited for that. Say hello. I okay. will. I will. But you young women are beautiful and smart and great and it's just nice to get to talk to you. Just trying to follow in your footsteps. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Teresa, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me. Thank you.